for life.
Good morning, the Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Welcome to everybody, members of faith and grace who are at home watching us to lead this worship service today, January 24th, that we celebrate in the Christian Church the third Sunday after the Epiphany. So it's good to be here. God's Word being proclaimed to you and to all of us and to remind us that the Lord is with us, always guiding us and protecting us and reminding us of His love and mercy for us. The theme for this service today is Christ is calling. As Christ calls His first disciples, the call to repentance and faith continues. Even today, as we are gathering His name, in this way, that same call through those the Lord has placed in His right time is heard with open ears and willing hearts within this church, that we may live faithful lives of repentance and faith as we follow Him. Just I have an announcement is regarding the annual report that we are working here at FAITH. So we are asking those members who have responsibilities in the church to send you reports by fe February 7th. We don't have too much time, but I think that we need to work on the annual report in order to send it to all the members of FAITH and grace. Let us begin our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with a song for God's kids that is going to be in 8.33. Listen, God is calling. Thank you. 
At this moment, we have a message for the children, but we all are children of God. So, in a sense, it's a message for all of us. And we are going to talk this morning about a prophet who live in the Old Testament and his name is Jonah. So what are we going to talk about the prophet Jonah? So let me tell you something before speaking about Jonah. What happened is there is a, sometimes we like to run. For example, I have here a mess, uh, a picture here, somebody running away because there are bees behind him. So, and we, we like to run, you know, and if something that we don't want to do or something that we have done, we run. So, just to give you a sense of what Jonah is going to do. So, let's go with the next picture. Jonah is a believer in God and he listens to God and he does what God tells him to do. But there was a time that he didn't do that. God told him to go to a city called Nenevite and proclaim his word in order that the people there repent of their sins. But what happened with Jonah? That's a picture here. He's running away. He's not going to Nenevite. And he's going to Tarshish instead. Yeah, he didn't listen to God. And what happened? He boarded a ship. So because he's going to Tarshish and he's not listening to God. So he goes to that ship and he said, I'm out of here. So it's what happened. And then what happened? There was a storm, a very bad storm. That's kind of a picture about what happened. So, the sailors came to Jonah and asked him questions, and he responded to them that he was a follower of God, and that God had told him to go to Nenevite, and he didn't listen to him. So the sailors were so afraid, because now they are dealing with God, and what happened, Jonah told them to throw him to the sea. And they did that. Uh-oh, he's in bad situation. He could drown, no, there. Do you think that that happened? No. A big fish came and swallowed up Jonah. And what happened? Jonah was in the belly of the big fish for three days. Imagine that. Three days in that big fish. But he had a chance for three days to think about God's word, what God had told him to do, and he didn't do it, to pray to him for mercy and to change his mind and to recognize that he made a mistake. So he repented of his sin of not listening to God. So what happened? The fish threw him to the shore. And, and then God came to him a second time. It says here, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the second time. So God told him again that he had to go to Nineveh to proclaim his word 
in order that the people of Nineveh repent of their sins. And now he's going to Nineveh. But he had to go through all that situation, all that problem. So friends, as Jonah at the end obeyed God and, and he went to Nineveh, God calls us as well in order to do an important work for God, to work something in God's kingdom. And we need to listen to the Lord and learn the lesson of Jonah. Keep in mind that we can run from God, but we cannot hide from Him. With His help, He's going to help us to do what He's telling us to do. So be aware of that and always keep an open mind to when God calls us to do certain work in His kingdom. Amen. Let us pray at this moment. God, we know we cannot hide from you. You know that we do and what we think. Give us the strength and courage to do all the things that you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this moment, we continue with the opening sentences. Praise the Lord! Praise, O servants of the Lord! Praise, Praise the, name the name of the Lord. Lord! Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From, from the, the rising of the sun to its setting, setting the, the name, name of the Lord is to be praised.
continue with confession and absolution. Gracious Lord, by your name you have called us your own, and we are to pray, praise and give thanks to you. Yet, Yet we often do not live as you have, have called us to live as, as your own. We, we do not always honor your name, nor, nor your calling with our praise. praise. We confess our sin to God in repentance, turning from those things that lead us away, turning back to you as we follow in faith. Almighty and ever compassionate Lord, we, we are by nature sinful and unclean. We confess our many failures as we have not followed you joyfully and trustingly. We have, we have not loved others as ourselves, and our thoughts, words, and deeds have not been pleasing to you. We have not always welcomed your call for us to follow you and you alone. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Hear and rejoice in the good news. Jesus Christ died for you and for his sake. God has compassion. As a called and ordained servant of the world and in his stead. I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the, the name, name of the Lord is to be praised. We continue with the android. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust, and lifts the needed from the ash heap, to make them sit with princes, with the princes of His people. Glory, glory be to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also Lord, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our, our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from the Old Testament reading, Jonah, chapter 3, a few verses from this chapter. The Lord causes repentance of the Ninevites through Jonah's preaching. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nenavite, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nenavite according to the word of the Lord. Now Nenavite 
was an exceedingly great city, three days journey. In breath, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nadavite shall be overthrown, and the people of Nadavite believe God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them. And he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from the epistle to the first Corinthians, chapter 7. As time grows short, Paul encourages faithful use of time. And this reading will be the text for our sermon this morning. This is what I mean, brother. The appointed time has run very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as those they have known, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they have no goods. And those who deal with the world, as though they have no dealing with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things how to please his wife, and his interests are divided, and the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit, but the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our third reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, verses 14 through 20 from chapter 1. Jesus calls the first disciples to follow him. Glory to you, O Lord. O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our Christian faith as speaking the Apostle Creed. I, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian friends, in today's epistle, God says to each and every Christian, I want you to be free from anxieties. Also says in this epistle that he wants to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. With these words, the Lord your God wants you to know that he is able to help you make important decisions in your life. Paul begins saying to Mary men, live as though you have no wife. Paul is saying to both husbands and wives, live as though you are not married. Now some of you wives are saying to yourselves, hey, he already does that. <laughs> We may say that Paul does not understand marriage because he was not married. But remember that he writes in Ephesians also, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And he also writes, let each one of you love his wife as himself. So Paul is not saying that husbands or wives should forget they are married. No. Let us talk about this. In the time of Paul, there was such a high expectation that Jesus would immediately return. Paul believed that people should not divide their attention by getting married. There would be no time to raise the kids anyway. That's why Paul says in verse 29, the appointed time has grown very short. And in verse 31, he writes, the present form of this world is passing away. So what he's saying is, let those who have wives live as though they had known. The merry man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. The merry woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. You see, we live in a time that is growing shorter and shorter. We live in a world that's passing away. So do not get caught up in clinging to the things of this world. Friends in Christ, here Paul is not only including being married, but as well those who mourn, those who rejoice, those who buy goods, and those who are dealing with the world. These things are not going to last. This world is not going to last. Therefore, keep a light hold on the things of this world. And instead, take a firm hold, keep a firm grasp on that which will endure for eternity. We Christians today still live in the high expectation that our Lord Jesus might return at any moment to judge both the living and the dead. But the time has also passed and we have learned to wait, to be patient. We also have gone on 
marrying and giving in marriage according to the word of the Lord and with his blessings. Now look at the bigger picture in today's epistle, which has to do with more than the divine gift of a man marrying a woman. God has written some important guidance into today's epistle that will help us with many important decisions that we will need to make in our life while we patiently wait for our Lord's return. First, let us begin with the end of the epistle where God says that he wants to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. The words promote good order direct us, send us to the Ten Commandments. Friends, good order is built into the commandments. If you make decision by ignoring or reject, rejecting God's Ten Commandments, then you have no reason to expect any blessing from Him, either in this life or in the life to come. But if you make your decisions with God's Word and commandments central to your mind and heart, then you may trust that you are headed in a good direction. So the Ten Commandments should be integral to our decision making at every stage of life. Here are a couple examples of what I mean. Do you agree with me that we live in a world that allows you to buy more stuff than you afford? But God says in his commandments, you shall not steal and you shall not covet. So when you are thinking about making a major purchase, such as buying a car or a house or anything else, God wants you to make the decision that will fit your budget. God does not want you to pretend that you have more income than you do. That is good order. God says in the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. These words indicate that God forbids us to take the life of another person. And this includes killing through abortion and euthanasia. Soldier might be, however, because the God who said, you shall not murder, has also commanded us to obey our government, the fourth commandment, in Romans chapter 13. And the fourth commandment permits to be a member of the army and allows even for military service. Each of God's Ten Commandments can be brought to bear upon the major decision you must make. God's commandments will give you the blessing of helping, helping you marry, marry you your options when it comes to family, career, and every other part of life. Solomon said it well in Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of all mankind. Now let me be clear, the commandments will not get us into eternal life. Jesus Christ our Lord has already done that job for us exclusively and completely with his bloody death and victorious resurrection. 
Yet the words of God are clear and they declare in Proverbs chapter 8, Blessed are those who keep my ways. Paul says also to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. With these words, God is telling you that he does not want you to take up a field of study or job that will cause you to doubt or to reject the divine gift of faith in Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. God does not want you to gather friends for yourself who will devalue or undermine your Christian confession. God does not want you to do things that will prevent your access to the gift that he has given to you for increasing your faith, namely the preaching of the church and the administration of the Holy Communion. God wants you to make wise and careful decisions that will enhance, promote, and secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. In today's epistle, God says yet another important thing about decision making. Before we get to that, however, we should pause and notice what God does not say here about decision making. First, God does not say that he will help your decision by whispering into your ears, speaking in a dream or thundering from the sky. God used to talk that way in his Old Testament. Hear now how God now speaks to us. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. These words indicate that the good news concerning Jesus is greatest and final thing that God wishes to say. These words also indicate that God's Christians today have no business seeking dreams, visions, and prophecies. Second, you should also bear in mind that just because you make a careful, God-pleasing decision does not necessarily mean that your life is going to be easy and trouble-free. The Bible describes the Christian life as one of hardship and cross, one that God promises will end with a victorious resurrection. Keep in mind that the Lord your God does not use riches, happiness, or success to indicate that He is pleased with you. God is fully and completely pleased with you on account of Jesus' baptism into your life and His sanctifying death for your sins. Now, let us talk about the most important element God has for your major decisions in life. God says here, I want you to be free from anxieties. Yes, Paul uses these words to talk about the everyday challenges of marriage. But these words certainly have a wider, wider application to all decisions in life, as I said before. God wants you to be free from anxieties. This means that 
You should think things over carefully, but do not get too preoccupied or paranoid. Just take your best shot within the parameters of the Christian faith and let your God be your God. Let your God be your God. Trust in the Lord in any decision you take in life. He tells us, the Lord washes over the way of the righteous. Psalm 1. And you have been made righteous in the blood of Christ. 1 Peter, Peter chapter 3. In Matthew chapter 10 he says, not even a sparrow can fall to the ground outside your father's care and you are worth more than many sparrows. Therefore, it is written, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Psalm 55. We also have the personal promise of our Lord in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Dear friends in Christ, God is pleased with you in Christ Jesus, in his forgiveness and life, that you no longer need to worry too much about the details. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him give us all things? Romans chapter 8. Therefore, nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Romans chapter 8. Not even major decisions concerning college or work, marriage or family, medical or financial situations, pandemic or any other tribulation. Today's epistle speaks the grace of God and the freedom we now have in Christ Jesus our Lord. The words, I want you to be free from anxieties mean that you can choose the blown Christian or the red-headed one, and God will bless you in many ways either way. Or you can choose work or a school according to your own good pleasure, since the work of pleasing God is already fully accomplished in Christ Jesus. Or you have nothing to fear in any decisions you face. No matter what comes, hardship and ease, lean or plenty, sorrow or happiness, no matter what comes, your future shall be full of God's grace. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is saying to you and me, I want you to be free from anxieties. Jesus Christ is your past, having been crucified for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus Christ is your present, ever cleansing you and washing over you in the power of your baptism. Jesus Christ is your future, bringing you at last to your eternal home and promising promising to make right again everything that shall seem to go wrong. Dear friends in Christ, your God, your God has sworn and he will not change his mind. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Lord, as 
you have called us as your own. Gather us together and enlighten us by your Spirit through your Word. We bring to you our prayer and praise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for all people of the world that that epiphany epiphany light shine the radiance of your son our savior jesus christ shine the hearts and minds of all people for those who are wayward and lost and for those who have rejected your call to repentance and faith we pray you use us in our words and witness to point to you that many more would faithfully follow. He 
healing according to your will. Be with those who grieve, that the assured promise of Christ's victory over death and the grave bring hope in times of hopelessness. For those who live in doubt, fear and distress, extend your call of grace through your word and those who proclaim it.
Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. As the Lord sent his life renewing word through Jonah and the prophets, be assured of his forgiveness and love. As the Lord called and sent his apostles to be fishers of men, hear his voice and follow him. As we have received God's grace this day, for the sake of Christ our Lord, hear his call to repentance, rejoice in his forgiving grace, and give him thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. if you need something from me or from any other members of the church. So have a blessed day. Take care of yourself. And remember, the Lord is with you.